Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So huge news, James Gunn and Kevin Feige just confirmed the title of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is Volume 2, as in awesome mix Volume 2. It's just a, a play on the irreverent mixtape theme of the first movie. So, so, I mean, so you get the point. It's Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but it's Volume 2 because it's awesome mix Volume 2. The way James Gunn confirmed it too was kind of funny. Technically, Kevin Feige did it last night at a press Q&A for Ant-Man, but not a lot of people realized what happened until this morning. So when I saw James Gunn make the comment, I was like, is this, is this a joke? Is this, is he just kidding? Because it doesn't sound like a real title. But now that I think about it in the context of the awesome mix, I think it totally works. They'll be shooting Guardians pretty soon. James Gunn has already offered up some details about it. Namely, there will be no Hulk. Like, you know, no Hulk in space anytime soon. No Nova. There'll be a new member of the Guardians team. And in the movie, thematically, we'll deal with the issue of shitty space dads. Maybe not all of them will be shitty, but I just like the idea of thinking that a better way to say it would be fathers and their children will be a big theme in the movie, but I, I like the idea of shitty space dads, because you have Thanos, shitty space dad, you have Star-Lord's dad, who's going to be a shitty space dad. Turns out, in the Marvel Universe, when you have a kid in space, you will be a terrible father. Even Odin, who's a hero, is kind of a terrible dad. Most of the time, the comics paint him as, as a pretty big dick. For everyone still wondering about Peter Quill's father, best odds right now are that it's Star Fox. There will be more humanoids in the film, but no more humans from Earth, so like, don't expect Captain Marvel. Guardians is one of those franchises that Marvel has that's so different looking and feeling from the other Marvel movies, and it's been so successful, they're just going to leave James Gunn and those guys off by themselves to build that universe out a little bit more before they cross over. So don't expect any, any of the Avengers to show up, at least until the third movie. Avengers Infinity War, all bets are off. Kevin Feige, James Gunn have all said, yeah, definitely everybody has to meet at a certain point. That's Endgame, but that is like a long ways off in the distance. One of the really fun things about Marvel's press Q&As for movies is that they also talk a lot about the other movies. So we learned a bunch of things about the rest of Phase 3. Going down the list, let's start with Spider-Man, just because everybody's been talking about Tom Holland recently. They're still trying to figure out who the villain is going to be for the first Spider-Man movie. They're not doing the Uncle Ben origin story, so I'm not expecting them to repeat villains that we've seen recently either. Venom and Symbiote feels like a couple steps away. I mean, there's just like so many classic villains they haven't done yet. Like you have the Vulture, you have Mysterio. Like, I mean, you know, there are several big villains they could do before they go back to Venom. Venom is that character that you march out when Spider-Man starts to get really dark himself. Where he starts looking at himself and he goes, wow, I have crossed the line here. And when we meet Peter Parker for the first time, he's going to be like 15 in Captain America Civil War. Then by the time he gets to that first Spider-Man movie, he'll be 16. So he's not ready to be super dark yet. At worst, he will be a little bit emo, but not like Tobey Maguire levels of emo. Next up on the list, the Mandarin. Still in the Marvel Universe, if you remember the short they did after Iron Man 3, it just suggested that the Ten Rings and Mandarin were real people, even though Ben Kingsley was an imposter during Iron Man 3. So he's still out there somewhere. Marvel isn't quite ready to use him yet. Marvel has a bit of an issue with that character because for most of his history in the comics, he's a bit of a racist stereotype. Marvel really likes to release films in China, and they're very particular about movies they let into the country. They only let 20 American films in per year, and it's like, it's like a billion dollar industry. So if they feel like there's something racist in a movie, they're not going to let it in. So when the Mandarin does eventually show up, don't expect him to look exactly like he does in the comics. And no, Robert Downey Jr. Has, has pretty much said that there is no Iron Man 4 on the books right now. Next up, Captain America Civil War. So Mark Ruffalo made, made this weird comment where he was like, well, if, if Robert Downey Jr. says I'm in the movie, I guess I'm in the movie. Like he didn't know whether or not he was in. Like where, where is Hulk during Civil War? Kevin Feige clarified that comment that, that Mark Ruffalo made. He said, Hulk is not a primary part of Civil War. He may not be part at all. People are just taking that to mean that he might actually have like a really small part in it, like a really small cameo. Civil War, the movie, is kind of like Avengers 2.5 in that it just has so many characters in it. When you look at the massive list of characters that Marvel has done in movies before, most of those are involved with Civil War in some way. It makes sense because in the comics, almost every single Marvel character was in it. If you guys have ever been to Disney's D23, this is also like the year to do that because Kevin Feige said they might be bringing some footage from Civil War to that. They've been shooting the movie for a couple months now, so they actually do have enough footage to show off and enough footage to build a trailer. Don't be surprised if the first Civil War trailer drops in August, like the first promo. I'm expecting them to attach a really big trailer to Star Wars in December, but they'll probably release something way before that. 
Moving on to Ant-Man, Kevin Feige said that they might be doing a sequel before Avengers Infinity War is over. Like they might put an extra movie on the books. They've already announced all their phase three movies, but they might change that lineup just a little bit, depending on the success of Ant-Man. Like if it does really well, they'll fast track a sequel. There've already been some spoilers about the post credit scenes. There's a mid credit scene, and then there's like an after the credit scene. So be sure to stay through the entire credits whenever you go see it. And please do not post those post credit spoilers. Ant-Man itself isn't like a huge springboard for the other Marvel movies in the way that the Avengers movies always are, but there is a lot of setup for Doctor Strange in it too, so pay attention. It's not quite as literal as like an actual scene, like I'm not expecting Doctor Strange to show up in the movie. But thematically there is some weirdness in Ant-Man that will give you an idea for the weirdness of Doctor Strange as a movie. They actually just went to England to start shooting Doctor Strange, so we'll probably start hearing more about that movie throughout the rest of the year. And then just speaking about the TV universe, he, he was mostly referring to Daredevil, but Kevin Feige also confirmed that TV characters would start showing up in the movies eventually. It's long been rumored that the Defenders would show up in Avengers Infinity War. Now, the, the Defenders is still a long ways off. We still have to do Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist. But do not be surprised if the street-level hero team-up shows up in the big blockbuster superhero team-up. Infinity War is going to be like, like the biggest Marvel party they've ever done on screen. They're going to send invites to everybody. It'll be like an RSVP for the end of the universe before, you know, Thanos does his finger snap and wipes out half the universe. Just speaking about that too, I would be totally surprised if the Infinity Gauntlet goes down the exact same way it does in the comics, where Thanos is like, I'm courting death, I'm going to kill half the universe in one finger snap. That's part of the classic Infinity Gauntlet storyline. A, a big part of that is the heroes figuring out how to bring back the half of the universe that Thanos kills. I'm expecting movie Infinity War to be way simpler than that, and I don't know that we will see the cosmic entity death. It just depends on how trippy they get with Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Th those are like the only space-based movies we have right now. So if you see a bunch of really weird cosmic stuff in those movies, I, you know, I think it'll give us a good idea of, of how weird Infinity War is going to get. So that's a whole lot of news. Let me know, what do you think about the idea of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 being called Volume 2? I know a lot of you guys are asking about Awesome Mix 2. Dick James Gunn has already picked the track list. He hasn't announced it yet, though. He said that was one of the first things he did. Like, before he wrote the screenplay, he picked what Awesome Mix 2 was going to be. We got a tease for that at the end of Guardians 1. It was the gift that his mother gave him that he never opened. So lots of Marvel stuff happening this morning. Th there was another Marvel video that I was working on, so I'll just I'll do that next after I do my Game of Thrones Q&A. It's just going to be about Marvel movies set in the past, because Kevin Feige said that they're probably going to do another movie like Captain America the First Avenger that takes place entirely in the past. My best theory about that, just off the top of my head, is that it would be Inhumans, or it would be like some other new IP that they haven't done yet. They could always do a movie for an existing franchise like, like Iron Man or Captain America or even Thor and set that way, way in the past entirely, but I, I don't think that they would do that right away. I think if they were going to do a movie set in the past, it would you know, be with relatively minor characters and it would be some sort of new IP. It would really be fun to see War of Kings set in like, like the past, in the distant past of the galaxy, which does kind of make it sound like Star Wars, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But Disney does own both franchises, so they can rip each other off as much as they want. So let me know, if Marvel does a movie set in the past, what do you want them to do? Remember, it has to entirely take place in the past. So don't forget, Game of Thrones Q&A coming tonight. Be sure to subscribe to get that. In the meantime, just in case you haven't seen it, I did a Game of Thrones video yesterday all about the history of House Tyrell. You can click here to learn all about that. And you can click here to learn all about Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and what James Gunn has said about it so far. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.